we're here tonight, and as a Baptist pastor, this is the only mass that I'm entitled to perform, and uh, a mass or a group deliverance. Now, if you've never been in a mass or a group deliverance, let me say, first of all, nothing we're going to do here tonight is going to hurt you, but it could be a great deal of help to you. And so we urge you to take part. Some, it's going to seem simplistic. It's going to seem rather, well, what are they doing that far? And that doesn't apply to me. But the thing is, just take it by faith right now and go along. I'm going to leave. What I, all I'm, it's very simple. There's nothing complicated. There's nothing mystical or hidden about what I'm going to do. It's very simple. It's so simple it shouldn't work at all. And I always stand amazed. I do this thing, oh, I don't know how many times a year. I used to do it almost 50 or more times a year in different parts of the country and overseas as well. And the results are always the same. And it shouldn't work, but it does. And it's very simple. There's nothing hidden about it. I'm going to move this mic a little bit. There's nothing hidden or mystical about it, and it's just open and shut. What we're doing is going to be based on Bible scriptures. I'm not going to stop and, and go through them all, but if you go through these renunciations, I can promise you this. It will set in motion some things that could change your life for the better. And some, uh, many people are nodding their heads. They've, they've experienced this. They thought it was kind of odd, too, when we did them. But then they found out that it only starts here. It will we'll continue for weeks and weeks and weeks to come. Because what we're going to do is take away the legal grounds and the legal holes that demons have to torment you and your family. Does that sound like a pretty good thing? Yes. We're also going to break a lot of curses that have been put on you by yourself, by others, by your ancestors. Because you see, Christians have the power and the authority to break every curse. And though you may not have had a very good start yourself, and though your parents may not have been Christians or those who were godly to guide you into a godly way, uh, you're going to have a chance tonight to break those curses and give yourself and your children and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren a better t chance than you had. Does that sound like a bargain? So for the sake of yourself, your family now, and also for the sake of those who will follow after you, I would urge you to take part in this. If you've taken part in it before, remember that there are many people sitting in this auditorium have been through it a number of times. Each time you receive some deliverance, it uncovers another area. And as you walk with Jesus, other areas are uncovered, and they become ripe. Did you ever have an apple tree? or a peach tree, they don't get ripe all at the same time, do they? Some of them are still green, some are luscious and ripe. We're going to pull the luscious ripe ones tonight. Some of the others, will blo they'll blossom out and ripen later, and some of them are going to fall off the tree because, uh, well, I'm going to give it a good shake before we leave to see how many we can shake loose. I'm not going to pull any green apples, but if we can shake them and they'll come loose, then uh, it's time for them to come off. And you should go away from here blessed and helped. And the thing that it will do for you is to make you able to do some of those things you've never been able to do in your spiritual life. And this church stands as a way station to help others. Our job is to help members of the body of Christ who come in here. Now what you do with what you receive here, that's up to you and the Lord. We cannot monitor you. We're not going to stay in and diaper you and burp you and all that. But we will give you a push in the right direction. And if you will give God half a chance, he'll take you right along. And the next thing you know, you'll be sailing along with more power in your life, more ability to read the scriptures. And some of you are going to find out during the next week areas of your life that have been set free that have formerly been bound in tightest bondage. Some of you are going to find some set free tonight. And I'm not going to stand here and tell you what's going to happen. I used to do that. 
And then people would accuse me of psyching the crowd. Well, you psyched them up. You got them hysterical. And then they got into hysteria. I'll loan you my list if you want to stand up here and read it off. And you provoke hysteria and see what happens. I love these times because God's people get free and the devil gets a black eye. And the demons get beaten. And that's what, we're at. that's what it's all about, isn't it? We want to be free so we can serve Jesus. How can we pray for our government? How can we pray for our president? How can we pray for our leaders? We, we criticize them all the time. I do too. But do we pray? Are we free enough to really pray with power to help them? Because you see, they're under demonic pressure too because of their positions. You say, well, I don't think they're Christians. Well, so what? Nebuchadnezzar wasn't either, and God made him crawl and eat grass for seven years to learn him a lesson. It would be interesting to see some of our politicians out to pasture for a while. <laughs> the ones who have lied to us. I guess I need more deliverance. Uh, <laughs> they... The thing that we need to understand, people, is that this is to help you to be a better Christian, to be able to do many of the things that you've always longed to do, the things your godly preachers and pastors have preached to you, the book, the things that godly men have encouraged you, and you've tried repeatedly and failed and tried and failed and tried and failed. Brother Ellender was telling me about a great move that's going on in Louisiana among young people who are being broken loose. And they call in and they said, we like this, we like you preacher. You're the first real person we've seen. We don't want what we've seen in our church. This was kids in the church. And so he hollered help. And Robert went over and all those kids got saved. Then they started getting delivered. And then it's just spreading, spreading, spreading. You see, if you want to get men in your church, you need to have a fight. Men were created with a drive in them to work and to fight. That was because God purposed and prepared men for the role of the protector of the home, church, and nation. And he also groomed them to be the provider for the home, the family, the nation, and the church. And in a, uh, the cry is, we don't have any men in our church. Well, get a, get a man's program going. Our church is over half big old ugly men. You know why? Because we fight. Men love a fight. They can't resist it. I've gone into churches where they never heard of deliverance and introduced deliverance. And, and I'd have a, usually I land a karate spirit the first night. Somebody comes up and says, I'm a black belt karate. And I think, oh, my Lord, and all my warriors are back at Hegwish. And I look around, and all these men are sitting there, a few of them. And I remember getting hold of a 15-year-old boy one time, and I said, okay. He said, Pastor, I just, I'm convicted. I believe it's wrong. I said, you don't get rid of it? He said, yes, sir. So I started calling on karate, and it started going, mm, mm, mm. And the muscles started flexing. I was holding on to him because I knew what was going to happen. You've seen a rocket take off from Cape Canaveral? Well, I've been hooked onto some of those rockets. And uh, you say, you're afraid little old 15-year-old boy? Listen, friend, I've been tossed 15 and 12, 15 feet across church from these things. Uh, they're, like, they're like a rocket taking off. And so I just held on to him. I said, I need some men up here. And he was going, mm -hmm. I said, come on out of there. And he said, and the, these men sitting there in shock, you know, I said, I need some men up here. And about that time he went, Rah! and up he came and took me. And well, when they saw him pick me up, they were impressed. <laughs> I was pretty impressed myself. <laughs> and down on the floor we went. And that brought the men in. These men had never been in deliverance, but they took to it like ducks to water. <laughs> and you see, the trouble is, the church doesn't have anything to fight about now. Oh, they get in a big argument about the color of the ruffle on the nursery curtain. <laughs> or who's going to sing the solo at the cantati? But men don't get much in a boil about that kind of thing. They say, oh, let the women take care of that. <laughs> 
But you get deliverance going and you'll get all the big ugly men, you'll see them looking. Next thing you know, hey, grab a leg over here. Because usually they're standing there. I saw a wrestler standing watching one time. He thought, how ridiculous. One man on each leg and that leg flipping that guy up and down like this, you know. <laughs> popping him like a flag, you know. And he thought, he told me later, he said, I sat there and I thought, now he's not using proper leverage. There's no reason for that leg to come up from there. Because this guy had been, been pent by about eight men. And, um, and this other guy on the leg was going up and down. I said, can you help hold there? He said, sure. He walks over. He gets hold. Next thing you know, he's popping in the breeze. <laughs> I looked down and I said, can't you hold a leg? He said, I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> I said, you suppose this is real? He said, it's real. Good Lord. It's real. You see, things happen that shouldn't be possible. Brother Eleanor's tells my little, well, 15-year-old girl picked up a great big pew like this with a, full of people. Now, some of you got nervous right then. <laughs> Don't worry, ours are anchored in the cement. But they also come up. You may rise sooner than you think if some humongous demon happens to erupt near you. But I will say this, you, you don't have to be afraid. There's nothing to be afraid of. You notice we have all the children and babies in the services. We have nurseries, but they're just simply to take them out and tan their jacket and bring them back. <laughs> or we have rooms where the mothers can feed the little ones and diaper them or whatever they need. And you'll see some of our, our folks going out, the baby starts crying when they head for the door because they've already found out there's nothing funny out there. A lot of times they say, no, no, I don't want to go out. I don't want to go out. Because they know down at the foot of the stairs, judgment is waiting. <laughs> uh, we just believe that, you know, that children ought to be a part of the thing. And you'll find our children are not afraid of demons. Uh, we have to watch them because they get around where the demons are threshing sometimes. And they're busy carrying oil bottles and everything, all the equipment we need. The children are very helpful. So there's nothing really to fear. Now, a lot of times people come to deliverance meetings where I am across the country, and they'll, they come in like this. I heard we were going to talk about Satan and demons. And then I get up and laugh, and I have such a good time, they think, well, he's sacrilegious or something's wrong with him. Well, if I was up, as uptight about demons as most people I meet, I'd have a nervous breakdown in less than two weeks. God showed me a long time ago when we first got in this 17 years ago, he, he said, if you're going to fight a war and be at war all the time, with all leaves canceled, every soldier on call, then the soldiers have to enjoy the battle or they'll burn out. So you'll find our folks just go into battle laughing, having a good time. And so don't get upset if you hear somebody laughing. The demon has usually done or said some stupid thing. And they do, even though they're intelligent incredibly intelligent creatures. The first area we have to deal with is forgiveness. This has already been touched on in the workshop earlier, but we're going to go in depth now. We're going to plow down and get all the roots. You must forgive people who have hurt and disappointed you. If you don't, then you're going to open the door for evil spirits to come. Now let me say this also. For some of you, you may just now be coming into the knowledge that evil spirits are real. And the first reaction when you really know this is to go get paranoid. <gasps> they're everywhere. Oh, my Lord, good grief, they're everywhere. That's right. They really are. And people say, don't go to Worley's meetings. That man sees a demon behind every bush and one under every rock. Now, that's just not so. If you said two or three hundred, I'd tend to agree with you. <laughs> Friend, this world is alive with them like maggots. They're all over the place. You say, well, oh, oh my goodness. Let me give you a word of comfort. They're no worse now than they were when you didn't know a thing about it. They're running full speed. They've got the pedal to the metal. They're full throttle right now. They can't do any more than they're doing right now. And we're just cranking up on the sidelines. And we've got in low gear and we're crawling forward. And I've heard there's a second gear, and there's a running gear. And I heard tell there's an overdrive in this thing. 
that we can outrun any demon. We can catch him, hog tie him, and throw him out. I believe we're going to see that in our generation. Wouldn't you like to do that? I'm tired of being defeated. I'm tired of the church being, oh, oh, help me hold out faithful to the end. And you don't look like you want to even. Huh? You must forgive those who've hurt and disappointed you. Jesus told us in the model prayer, two instances in the gospel where he gave the model prayer, he said, forgive those who have trespassed or sinned against you as or with the same measure that uh, they forgive you. Uh, forgive those who trespass against you. Because if you don't forgive others, what's going to happen? You're going to open yourself to evil spirits. Now, they don't come in you, the first time you get mad at somebody. You say, when do they come? When do they come? I don't know. But I wouldn't hold the door open too long because they don't need much of an invitation to come creeping in. And once the demon gets inside, he must be kicked out in Jesus' name. He will not leave until you take away his grounds. We're going to take away his grounds tonight. Now, some of you have been hurt and disappointed since you were a child. And you say, well, I've tried to forgive those rotten people, but I just can't do it. And what are you talking to me about forgiveness for? They ought to be asking me to forgive them. And we feel so righteous, you know. But Jesus said, forgive. It's an order. Because he knew that many hurtful things would come to you and to your family if you do not forgive. For example, a spirit called unforgiveness will enter into you if you persist in refusing to forgive somebody who's hurt and disappointed you. Now, the reason we don't want to do it is because we have this notion, if I forgive them, somebody will think that they're right and I'm wrong. And I'm not. It's me. I'm innocent. God doesn't talk about the innocent party. He just says, you forgive so that you don't get in the way where evil spirits can waylay you. Unforgiveness will come in. Now, demons like to travel in groups. They don't like to be by themselves. They hate being by themselves. And they always have best friends that work with them. I, well, I can't call it friends because there's no such thing as friends in the demon world. But they have buddies they work with. And unforgiveness, as soon as he gets hold of you, will cause, will start pressing you from the inside. Let resentment come in. How does he do it? You spoke to her after what she did to me, and you, you, my friend, you had something to do with her knowing what she did to me? You're still talking to him after what he did to me? And you get resentful. And then you pray about it, you know, righteously. Oh, God. Oh, God, I'm the innocent injured party. Oh, God, I wouldn't ask anything drastic, but just strike them with lightning. <laughs> they're so wicked, they're so evil, and they may well be. You may be telling the truth. And then when God doesn't move, you say, well, thanks a lot. And you get mad at God. And you start getting resentful toward the Lord. Unforgiveness, resentment, and then you get bitter. It's not fair. Not fair. I got fired. He got a raise. She got a husband. I got a thug. <laughs> Not fair. Not fair. And we get bitter. 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 And see that spirit of bitterness will come in. And it will start to sour You've known people that were bitter. Not you, of course, but you've known people who were like that. <laughs> Unforgiving, resentful, and bitter. And then you can, then when they get that all set up, they'll get you to invite into yourself deep hurt and self-pity. And those spirits will help you have a pity party every day and feel sorry for yourself all day long and half the night. And that's when people get to where they hate to see you coming. They say, oh, Lord, here they come again. <laughs> Gloom and doom, Sally. 
bilious bill. They just, you know, there's just nothing. People don't even like to be around you. Why? Because these evil spirits are affecting your whole outlook. You become bitter. You become ugly, hateful. But that's not the worst thing. They clear off the landing fields for the big boys. And I'll tell you what those are in just a minute. But first of all, you say, I just can't forgive them. I tried, and I still remember it. And somebody told me that if you can still remember the hurts you haven't forgiven, well, they told you wrong. There are some hurts and some disappointments so deep and so bitter that you'll remember them the longest day you live on this earth. When you get to heaven, it'll all be erased. But until then, you'll remember, and you'll know about it, and you'll feel the hurt, the disappointment of it. But remember this. You can tell when you've forgiven somebody. You forgive not with your emotions, but your will. That's already been pointed out. See, we react emotionally to hurts and disappointments, so we think we have to feel a certain way in order to forgive, and it's not true. You forgive out of your will, not out of your emotions. All right? Now, when you, uh, you make up your mind to do it, and you just forgive people, because they need forgiving and because Jesus wants you to. I feel somebody kind of tighten up on me and say, you don't understand the situation, Pastor. No, I probably don't. But God does, and he's the one that gave the orders. And if you don't forgive, you almost certainly will develop cancer and or arthritis. I believe that 95, 90, 95% of cancer and arthritis is rooted directly in bitterness unforgiveness and resentment. Even the psychiatrists who don't know a great deal have found that out. The correlation between those things. Now, you must forgive. It's to your benefit to forgive. If the person is dead who hurt or disappointed you, you still have to forgive them because that hurts alive in you. We're not forgiving them to help them out. We're getting ourselves some help. Do you understand? If they really are that bad, do you want to persist and say, I'm going to be stubborn, I'll just be unforgiving as long as I want to? You're going to risk what the consequences are? I think you'd be foolish, don't you? Now, also, when you forgive a person, if they're living, you need to ask God to bless them. And right here, I feel resistance. Brrr. Somebody says, uh, uh. Now, preacher, I was listening to you pretty well up till then. Sounded pretty good. No way. That old hussy stole somebody else's husband after she got mine. That old man robbed somebody else, took all their savings after he cleaned us out. I'm not asking God to bless any such mess as that. No way. But see, you don't understand what God means by blessing. If a person's lost, what's the best blessing could come to them? salvation. Are you so hurt, so disappointed, so angry that you don't want them to get saved? That'd make you look pretty tacky, wouldn't it? You wouldn't even look religious. We've got to be very particular to look religious at all times, right? Randy talked to us about that. We've got to keep up appearances. We've got to look right, you know. You say, well, hmm. Well, I guess that's what you mean. Yeah, the old reprobate certainly needs saving. Yeah, I can, okay, bless him. Then somebody said, well, wait a minute. You know, somebody hurt and disappointed, they claim to be a Christian. What about them? Well, what about them? Somebody who claims to be a Christian but is away from the Lord is hurting people. What's the best blessing God can bring to them? Reach out and pull them back to himself? Are you so angry you don't want them to get back to the Lord? You wouldn't look too good on that either, would you? You'd say, well, no, all right. I guess that's what you mean. Okay, Lord. Bring them back to yourself, bump their head on a stump or two and make them remember the trip. No, don't do that. <laughs> see, the very fact you think that, think that indicates you still need some more deliverance, you see. It is a pleasant thought, isn't it? Um, but um, let, let's leave it up to God how he brings them back. What we want to do, you see, is get you free and get you in a position where God can deliver you from these spirits that have brought you nothing but sorrow and misery and heartache. And some of you who have been deeply hurt, deeply disappointed from the time you were a child, 
tonight, if you'll go along with this and be sincere and honest with the Lord, you're going to get a lot of release just to almost as soon as you renounce these things, it's going, to, it's going to let go. And you'll feel it. Some of the rest of you will sense the difference in the next week or so. And then those spirits will come, boy, they'll be ready to come out. What we're going to do, we're going to loosen them up so they'll be ready to come out when, when I call them out later. All right. Now, uh, we're going to pray now. It's a simple little prayer. And when we do pray, I'm going to ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes. Now, that's not because it's more sacred or holy to bow your head and close your eyes. You can pray any way, you, any position you're at. As a matter of fact, if you're digging a well and you fell in, the rope caught you by the foot, you was dangling just about three inches above the water, swinging with your nose, dipping in the water as you went past, you'd probably pray better than you've ever prayed. It's not the position of your body that indicates the urgency or effectiveness of your prayers. There is a good reason why I want you to pray like that, though. I want you to close your eyes and bow your heads when we do it. It's because, and I do hate to bring this up, but there's some nosy people here. Now, I know you're not, but you may be sitting next to the nosiest one in the whole crowd. And see what happens if a person's nosy and you're looking up this way praying and something were to happen over here in the peripheral vision, that person would lose track and get distracted and look over here. Not you, but, you know, that nosy person. They'd look over here to see what was going on, and they wouldn't get the blessing, you see. Now, uh, seriously, I want you to close your eyes and bow your heads because I want you to concentrate and be absolutely honest with the Lord, okay? You've got to be honest with the Lord if you're going to have Him move in your life. So if you would, take part in it. It won't hurt you, and I'd urge you to do it. It's not going to hurt you at all. It could help you a great deal. Repeat after me, please. Father in heaven, I confess to you that in the past I have held unforgiveness, sometimes bitterness and resentment in my heart against certain people who have hurt or disappointed me. I now recognize this as sin. I confess it as sin. For you've said in your word, if we confess our sin, you are faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I do now forgive the following people whom I remember who have hurt or disappointed me. Now, very quietly, because this is a very private matter between you and the Lord, you mention very quietly the names of the people who come to mind. The Holy Spirit will bring them to your mind. If the name pops in your mind, forgive them. Don't hesitate. I now freely forgive all these people. And if they are living, I ask you to bless them. I also forgive myself for all my many faults and failures. For you have freely forgiven me. And I thank you for it. And thank you, Father for freedom from the load, from the load. Of, unforgiveness, of unforgiveness, bitterness and resentment. Bitterness and resentment. In, Jesus name, I thank you. in Jesus' name, I thank you. Now see, wasn't that simple? Now if in the days to come, you should bring, the Lord brings to mind others, quickly forgive them, that simply. No big, no big rigmarole, no special thing, just simply forgive them. Say, I forgive Sam, I forgive Betty. And Lord, if they're living, bless them. Then you're, you're cut loose. You're free. The enemy then is left, as the Psalms say, in slippery places. Did you ever walk in slippery places? Did you ever get a bag full of groceries? Now, some of our southern friends won't understand this that are here. But all you northern tier folks will understand. This. Did you ever walk across 
a parking lot and it had a sheet of ice on one spot. And you had these two great big bags of groceries, just loaded all you could carry. And all of a sudden, you had the strange feeling that the ground wasn't just like you thought it was. Because one foot decided to go this way and one went this way. And they were playing split, you know. And you, what you were doing, you were, you were skidding on the ice. And suddenly, you forgot all about the groceries. They went every direction. You could care less about the groceries. Why? Because you were in a slippery place. And you were fly, like a flying windmill trying to keep your balance to keep from going down on that ice, right? You remember that? That's what the devil, folks, that's what happens to them, the demons, when you take away their grounds for being there. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to, we're going to jerk the rug out from under their feet in all the areas we can think of tonight. We're going to have them skidding and slipping and sliding every which way. And this, by the time they slide close to the, out, close to the outside, we're going to say, out in the name of Jesus. And they'll go, boom, out they go. Does that sound like a bargain? That's what we're here for. Amen. All right. Now, there's another area that causes believers to be bound and to open the door. This is the area of the occult. Now, of course, in your area, they probably don't have much of it. But in a lot of the areas, there is a lot of it. Anybody ever heard of the occult, witchcraft, fortune telling, all that sort of thing? Let me mention some of the areas of witchcraft and the occult that we need to worry, not worry about. We're going to take care of them tonight. You remember, God has been very specific in his word. Every area of the occult is hated, despised, and abhorred by Almighty God. He not only dislikes the occult, he hates it with a holy hatred. He calls it an abomination. He calls it spiritual adultery. He calls it um, everything but something nice. And in every case, every contact with the occult carries the death penalty. The death penalty. And also, what a lot of people don't realize is, it carries a curse to the third and fourth generation. Now, a generation is 40 years. That's 120 to 140 years of curses from God for just a touch of the occult. You say, I never did it. But, you know, if somebody in your bloodline did, you're under a curse right now. You say, well, I'm sure glad I'm not in it. Don't be too sure. I'm going to read off a list of common occult things. And, and if you've come in contact with it, then you're, you're polluted. There's no doubt about it. You say, where'd you get that? Out of the Bible. You'd be surprised what's in there. You ought to read it sometime. You say, well, I never heard of a three or four generation curse. I can tell you one worse than that. The curse of the bastard, the illegitimate child, is ten generations, friend. That's 400 years. Oh, by the way, what were your relatives doing 400 years ago? You say, ooh, you don't have to go back that far. Well, it brings a curse from God for 10 generations, and it also curses them from the congregation of the righteous, and they can never settle down in a congregation and be satisfied. They are constantly moving, moving. We're going to break that curse tonight, show you how to break it. You can do it yourself. I'm going to show you how. This is a do-it-yourself session, okay? Saves me a lot of time and trouble. Saves a lot of other deliverance workers. They don't have to do this individually. We take you through it all at once. And once it's done, it's done. If you really mean business, it's done. And from then on, it's just root them out because they have no more legal right to be there. All right? You say, well, I don't think I've ever come in contact. Well, hang on, buckle your seat belts. We're fixing to go down the list. How about the Ouija board? Oh, yeah, I know what that is. Parker Brothers puts out two to three million of them a year. Yeah, it's an ancient occult tool. You remember it's that little old thing that sits up on three little legs and, and it uh, moves, you, you talk to it and you ask it questions. It moves around, spells out the answers and the numbers and all. How old uh, how, will I meet him and what's his name and how long and, and how much and so forth, you know. You say, yeah, I remember that when I was a kid, they got one. You did? You say, yeah, I tried it, uh, but it didn't work for me. Oh, you did? Well, you were cursed. Your children were cursed. Your grandchildren were cursed. Your great-grandchildren were cursed. You say, but I was just a kid. 
I know. You were cursed. Your children are cursed. Your grandchildren are cursed. Your great-grandchildren are cursed. See, Satan doesn't label the poison. Okay? Now, let's see a little bit further. Sorcery. I'm going to only deal with one area of sorcery. It has a broader memory, meaning, but it's covered in some other areas too. I'm going to deal with one particular facet of sorcery is to open your mind for the entrance of demons by the use of drugs. Any mind-altering drug will do it for you. You remember when you uh, smoked a joint to see how it was? Did you get high? I hope you did, because you sure paid for it. You were cursed. Your children were cursed. Your grandchildren were cursed. Your great-grandchildren were cursed. And then you know you heard that if you dropped a hit of LSD, you could really sail off on a trip. Did you have a nice trip? I hope you did, because you sure paid the fare. You were cursed. Your children were cursed. Your grandchildren were cursed. Your great-grandchildren were cursed. You say, I did it several times. Well, every time. You were cursed. Your children were cursed. Your grandchildren were cursed. Your great-grandchildren. You say, I wish you'd quit saying that. I'm going to say it some more. God is dead serious about this business. Uh, you remember when you, when you heard, well, cocaine is a real new, new wrinkle, and you snorted some coke? Really got high, huh? Had a good time? Well, I hope so, because you sure paid for it. You were cursed. Your children were cursed. Your grandchildren were cursed. Your great-grandchildren were cursed. That's what a four-generation curse means. And then you heard about crack and smack and uh, THC and TPC and a whole bunch of others. You can do it on Valium. You can do it on some strong diet pills. Anything that separates your mind and body puts a crack in there where the evil spirits can come in. Ooh. Some of you are looking more serious than you did at the outset. Witchcraft of any kind, white, black, gray. They even tell me down the, in South Florida they got a yellow witchcraft. I don't care what color it is, it's witchcraft. Now, white witchcraft. That is where you do nice things for people, you know. You try to get them healed. You try to get them helped. Uh, white witchcraft is like Christian science. Of course, Christian science, I call them grape nuts. They're neither grapes nor nuts. And Christian science is neither Christian nor scientific. It's just an occult religion. And it's totally demonic. And uh, you, you say, well, you know, I know somebody. They paid the practitioner. He prayed. The migraine headaches went away. Yeah, but in return, you didn't know. But you got a brain tumor, maybe a heart attack. Uh, maybe kidney failure, gallstones, or some other lovely thing. See, when you trade in the devil's market, you trade up, not down. All you do is swap demons when you get healed by witchcraft. You don't really get healed. You get healed of one thing, but you get something worse, and it doesn't come out for a while. Only when you trade with Jesus do you get the blessing and no bad after effects. It's just praise the Lord, hallelujah, thank you. You don't get any bad kickback from Jesus. But anytime you deal with the devil, you're going to lose. And um, then you have, well, witch, black witchcraft. You know, that's the nasty kind. Voodoo, you know, where you stick pins and dolls and try to uh, make people sick and die and all that kind of stuff. I don't care what color it is. It's all witchcraft. It's like an octopus. Every tentacle, it still goes back to the body. And the body is witchcraft. White, black, gray, purple. I don't know what colors they got, but anyway, every one of them is bad. And water witching, why do you think they call it witching? If you've got a well that's witched, the water belongs to the Lord. I'd break the curse on it and claim it and thank Jesus for it. Take the curse off of it. You can do that. Then you've got divination, fortune telling of all kinds. Uh, by the way, the devil's changed the names of all the occult things. They now call them parapsychology. And they teach them in the universities and colleges. That makes it all right, doesn't it? Well, it depends on whose rule you're going by. If you're going by God's rule, you're cursed, your children are cursed, your grandchildren are cursed, your great-grandchildren are cursed, with every contact. God hates it. He hasn't changed his mind because the devil changed the name. Um, you say, well, you sound like kind of ignoramus. Well, maybe so. But stick around a little bit and see what happens. Divination, fortune-telling of all kinds. Uh, that includes um, automatic handwriting, handwriting analysis. That's a neat form of fortune telling. Tea leaves, coffee grounds, uh, crystal ball, tarot cards, palm reading, astrology, horoscopes. All of these things are in the occult realm. And all of these you touch, God is going to curse you for it. Oh, uh, <laughs> you got biorhythm. That's doing it with a calculator. I understand it was developed by a witch. It sounds like it. Sounds like astrology the first time I ever heard anything about it. 
Only do it with a calculator, it makes it sound scientific. You got good days, you got bad days. I'll tell you what, you better get your days lined up with Jesus. Forget about what some astrological type thing is. Gene Dixon, Irene Hughes, Edgar Casey, all the psychics, they're all witches. You say, Gene Dixon's a witch? Oh, yeah. Well, let me ask you, gals. If you had a dream or a vision and a great big snake crawled in bed with you, wouldn't that be fun, and wrapped around you and gazed in your eyes and said, look to the east for wisdom, would you think that was God talking to you? <laughs> well, she did. It's in her book. And if you were going to give a prophecy, gals, would you lay out tarot cards? Are other cards, playing cards? Or would you consult crystal balls or astrology charts? That's where she gets her predictions. She's a witch. Good dose of salvation, help her. She's just plain witch, that's all. Then uh, you got hypnosis. Oh no, hypnosis is scientific. It is not. It's demonic. You say, how do you know? Because I used to be real good at it. You say, aha! I knew why you were able to control these people. You're hypnotizing the crowd. Friend, I got news for you. When I got in deliverance, I found out what it was. I'd forsaken it years before because I had an uneasy feeling it wasn't right, and I didn't know why. When I got in deliverance, I got delivered of it. I couldn't hypnotize nothing. That's not good grammar, but that's truth. When that, when that evil spirit left, I was no longer able. Listen, I could put you under when you didn't want to go to sleep. That's pretty good. But I couldn't do it now. If I wanted to, which I don't, which I won't, I found something a lot better. I found setting people free to follow Jesus is a lot more fun than hypnotizing them. Amen? Amen. You say, well, I was hypnotized once. Oh, you were, but then you were cursed. Your children were cursed. Your grandchildren were cursed. Your great-grandchildren were cursed. You say, good grief, there you go again. Oh, I'm not through yet. I've got something on my list to offend almost everybody. <laughs> ESP. You say, yeah, they said I was real good at that. Oh, you are. Well, then you're cursed. Your children are cursed. Your grandchildren are cursed. Your great-grandchildren are cursed. Somebody in your family was in the occult. That's why you're good at it. These things are passed down through the bloodline, friend. Spiritualism, medium, seance. Did you ever go to seance? You know, they... One time, you know, when Aunt Betty died, she had that big old diamond ring. Nobody could find it after she passed. And they went down and got this medium and said, crank her up and see if you can get her to come up and tell us where it is. Our Uncle Ned had that shoebox full of money when we couldn't find it after he died. That's necromancy, communication with the dead. You can do it with Catholic saints. Ooh. You're welcome. Oh, St. Mary. Oh, St. Christopher, St. Jude, St. Saint Goodness. <laughs> Those are demon spirits you're communicating with. You say, well, I wondered why there were sometimes miracles around these saints. They're demonic friends. The devil hasn't gone out of business. He's in business just like he used to be, but so is God. Necromancy is forbidden. King Saul and his whole family were wiped out by God because he resorted to necromancy, trying to crank up the dead to get some answers. You try to crank up the dead, he'll kill you off too. Not only that, but Balaam was a true prophet of God, and they executed him for practicing divination over in Joshua, about first, second chapter. Just because you start out well doesn't mean you'll end up that way. You can, get your head, you can get, get your head chopped off. Balaam did. God will put a stop to it one way or the other. He's going to try to put a stop to it easy tonight. If you don't take the easy way out, there's, there are other ways for him to put a stop to it. But most of you are here because you're looking for the way God wants, and we're going to show you the best we know how. Oh, you have levitation, table tipping. You know, that's where you pick up people with your fingers, you know, put them under the, get one person on, put an index finger under each armpit and pick them up out of the chair, you know. You say, yeah, I saw that, you know. I just never could figure out how that worked. Oh, you were there, huh? Well, you were cursed, your children were cursed, your grandchildren were cursed, your great-grandchildren were cursed. 
You say, I just, I was just there. I know. You were cursed. Your children were cursed. Your God doesn't approve of demonic goings on. He hates them. You say, well, I thought God loved me, and you told me he's cursing me. Well, it is wonder we can keep going. But the wonder of it all is that he's made a way for you to get free from them. But Brother Eckhart pointed out to us that there are curses and you're not free until you appropriate the freedom. Just like you didn't get saved because Jesus died for the world, did you? Did Jesus die for the whole world? Did he? Sure did. Then everybody's saved. Some of you are shaking your head the other way now. What's the matter? No, no, only those who believe. Now the curses, the power over the curses is in the blood and in the resurrection. It was bought, paid for, but it only is appropriated by those who will exercise it. We're going to show you how to exercise it tonight. And once you know how, see, it's so simple, you can do it. You won't even have to come to me or anybody, any other preacher to do it. If you take notion to, you can break them off your family and everything else. You can break it off them when they don't even know you're doing it. You can go off in the bathroom and tell God about it. Break them off of them. And I advise you to do that. We need all the help we can get. And they have uh, astral projection, transcendental meditation. Those are kind of like instant insanity. Ekankar, soul travel, mind control of all kinds, EST, PSI. These are all in the occult realm. When you go on a transcendental meditation, you know, they tell you mantra, they say, say a mantra, da, 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 and then you can almost do it in a charismatic church sometime. When they sing that same, that same two sentence song 50 times in a row, and you just get there and you're going like this. You don't even know what's going on. You're getting passive and that's when the evil spirits come in. That's what the purpose of the mantra is. And some churches induce passivity. We don't want anybody passive here tonight. We want you actively participating. All right? The, um, let's go a little further. East, I told you I had something to offend almost everybody. The Eastern religions, Hinduism, Taoism, Confucianism, I Ching, Krishna, Zen, Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormonism, Christian Science, Rosicrucians, Theophysy, Unity, Metaphysics, Baha'i, Scientology, Inner Peace Movement, Spiritual Frontiers, Urantia, the Moonies, the Children of God, the Farm, the Islam, uh, the Black Muslims, the Way, the Walk, all of these things are in the occult realm. They're powered by occultism. Then you have biorhythm. We mentioned earlier. Then yoga. Every move in yoga is designed to open your body for the entrance of evil spirits. You say, are you sure? I've talked to all these birds. Any deliverance worker has been at it very long has personally talked to these fellows. Yoga and karate Taekwondo, Jiu-Jitsu, and all the martial arts are rooted in demonic. They all have demonic roots. And acupuncture came out of karate. If you want to be healed by Chinese witchcraft, help yourself. Then Freemasons and Eastern Star go right back to Babylon. And all of the lodges, the secret orders and the lodges, you know, the mooses, the odd fellows, the, the gooses, the buzzards, you know, the whole bunch. All of those secret orders go back to Babylon. And God, you know what God thinks of Babylon. Babylon the great has fallen, has fallen, has fallen, become the habitation of every evil creature. And you have many good and sincere people sucked into these organizations having no idea that they're an abomination to God. And you can come under a curse because your parents are involved in this. This is a curse. It can be broken off of you, though. If you renounce it, it can't stay on you. And you have, uh, uh-oh, I hate to do this, gals. You know, you pierce the ears. And those little dingle dangles that hang in them, God hates them. He hates pierced ears because it constitutes mutilation of the body. And uh, those little dingle dangles you have in your ears, you know, that little diamonds, little, you know. When God looks at them, you, he doesn't see them like we see them. He sees harlotry, he sees demon worship, and he sees slavery. Look it up in your concordance. If you don't believe, I'm telling you the truth. And he also, also, Bell's palsy is related to pierced ears. 
and pierced earrings, and also many female problems are caused by gals having the ears pierced. You see why the move on is to get even the baby's ears pierced? Now, I don't know what it causes in big men who get theirs pierced, I have an idea, but um, <laughs> they can be delivered from that too. Um, And, fellas, you were getting such a charge out of it about the gals and their pierced ears. You're thinking, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You look so smug. I have to tell you, your tattoos are in the same category. All right. Then charms, you say, well, thank the Lord. I don't have any of those. Don't be too sure. You just might have a charm laying around the house and not know that's what it is because the devil doesn't label his stuff. Uh, you got a hexagram around your place? You say, what's that? One of those six-pointed stars. You mean Star of David? Why, David had nothing to do with that thing. Solomon brought that thing in when he imported all those witches into his harem. And every Satan worshiper and witch in this area and in your area to this day uses that six-pointed star, the seal of Solomon, to cast evil spells and curses and to crank up demons. You say, you're anti-Semitic. Uh, no, I'm not. But I do. Uh, I, there is good news, though. You see, when Israel became a nation in 1948, there were two factions. One fought bitterly to keep that six-pointed star from being the symbol for Israel. And the other faction has always been present. You remember the ones that Jesus talked about, the generation of vipers, and John the Baptist said, you're a generation of vipers, snake worshipers, Luciferians. They're still present in present-day Israel. There's two factions over there. And the old Orthodox folks fought bitterly to keep that cursed thing from being the symbol of the nation Israel. They lost. But I understand, I just recently found, uh, somebody was telling me that everything, the six-pointed star has been removed off of everything except their flag now. They're eliminating it. Thank God. You say, well, I've got one that's got a little cross in it. Well, that does make it kind of sacred, doesn't it? Except if you read... Uh, Ralph Woodrow's Babylon Mystery Religion, you'll throw your crosses away because they don't mean what you think either. The cross is not a symbol of Jesus. It's a symbol of Tammuz, the son of Nimrod and Semiramis. Of course, some of you still ce celebrate Nimrod's birthday. 25th of December, that's his birthday. And everything about it is still there. There's not a thing Christian about it. You cannot dress it up and make it pretty. You can have the cantati all you want to and sing about Jesus. We have Christmas in July. We just had Christmas here the other day. I preached on the, I believe in preaching on Christmas, you know, just, I put it in July. And, uh, and we don't have a tree because that came from heathenism. We don't have to exchange presents. You're not ever to go to a birthday party where somebody else got all the presents except the person whose birthday it was. Did you? <laughs> Doesn't that strike you strange? Well, if you look it up, you'll find out it's because it didn't come from Jesus. Anyway, it came from heathenism. Well, some of you are looking at me funny and saying, oh my, he's gone off the deep end. That's right. I've been over here in this deep water for a long time. There's a lot of sharks over here, but we're getting some of them. Just hang on. Don't, don't leave me yet. Um, let's see. Charms. Oh, yeah, you've probably got some more charms around your house. You know that little cross with the oval loop on the top? You probably didn't know it, but that's the Ankh, the symbol of the Egyptian fertility goddess, which is a goddess of lust. And if you wear that thing or have it around your house, you're inviting a spirit of lust to come and visit with you. Congratulations. You know the little wiggly horn? That's called the Italian horn. It's one of its names. It means I trust Satan for my finances. Maybe that's why they're in such a mess. Um, and then you have the goat's head, you know, this thing. That's the satanic salute. And that's sold as little charm, on little charm bracelets and stuff, you know? And um, then you have the unicorn, the flying horse, and rainbows. Those are the symbols of the New Age movement, which is the uh, supernatural witchcraft wing of the Illuminati. And uh, I don't know why you want those things. By the way, you need to get rid of your owls and frogs, too. Amen. Ceramics, pictures. Why anybody want no nasty owl looking at them? Or squawky old frog, you know, 
Isn't it funny how the owls and frogs are so prominent in so many things? Hadn't you wondered about it? Watch out for these fad things. Almost invariably, they're promoted by demons. Owls and frogs, God speaks of as creatures of the night and of darkness, and he detests them. So what you need to do is get rid of yours. They bring sickness. They open the door for sickness. A lot of other things. I could tell you stories here for an hour or two about people who couldn't get healed, who couldn't get the blessing they sought until they broke up the owls and frogs. You might want to clean your house of all the dolls, too. <gasps> The word doll comes from the word idol, and up until just relatively recent times, nobody had dolls except witch doctors. And if you got, I tell you what, if you got one of those little dolls, cabbage plants doll, you know the one that looks like a horse stepped in its face? <laughs> Ugly thing. I don't know why anybody could go to sleep with all the things in the house with them, but uh, those things are definitely loaded with demonic power. There's no doubt about it. We've had reports of them levitating and everything else. And a lot of your bedwetting problems and stuff with your kids will vanish when you get rid of those dolls. Pray about it. See what God tells you. We're talking from experience. This thing, there, are, there are testimony after testimony in the books about experience with the dolls. Dolls can talk to you, too. You say, oh, come on. I'm not talking about some Hollywood movie. I'm talking about just real ordinary people like you. The doll pipes up and talks to them. Barbie dolls have been connected with anorexia nervosa. Well, some of you are looking kind of strange at me now. Fetishes, potions, spells, Dungeons and Dragons and other occult games will take you straight into witchcraft full speed ahead. And they'll have you so bound up you want to commit suicide pretty quick. Psychic readings, reincarnate anything teaching reincarnation, Mental science, false visions, superstitions, amulets, talismans, Satanism, karma, hex signs, all of these are in the occult realm. Now, what are we going to do about it? One thing that the demons can use as grounds to enter your life or to stay in your life is unforgiven sin. Unconfessed, unforgiven sin. That's why I had you confess the sin of forgiveness first and then forgive the people. Did you notice that? We made two steps. Now, in order to be sure we're clear about the occult, I'm not trying to force you to take my views on anything, but any of these things that I have said, mentioned that you've been involved in or that you think may be in the occult realm, if you're ready to let them go, I'm not going to argue with you about it. You say, well, I don't believe this and that and the other. Some of you say, I'm not getting rid of my earrings. Well, you think about it every time you put them on after this. But uh, I'm not trying to force you to do anything, but you think about it. And if some of them you're not sure about, go and ask the Heavenly Father about it. He'll tell you. He's, he, he talks to his kids, you know that? If you're willing to learn, he'll, he'll teach you. But the things you're really convinced, well, I better let that go. It's not worth fooling with. I'll let it go because it's not worth having. Then we're going to show you how to get rid of it. First, we need to confess the contacts of the occult as sin. And then we're going to close the door to Satan. We're going to notify him that... that party's over. Amen? Does that sound good? Amen. All right. So bow your heads again with me for concentration and repeat after me in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I do now confess to the Father that through ignorance, curiosity, our willfulness, I have, I have come into contact with certain occult things, certain occult things. because I now recognize these contacts as sin. I confess them as sin and claim forgiveness in Jesus' name. Specifically now, I confess the following occult things as sin, as sin, and I renounce them in Jesus' name. Now, very quietly, because this, again, is very personal and private, you tell the Heavenly Father the areas that you've come in contact with that you're willing to dump overboard tonight. You see, I'm leaving it up to you what you throw overboard.
I also renounce and confess as sin any false oaths which I may have made to any false god. I renounce any idolatry in which I have been involved. Satan, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. And I'm closing any door that I or my ancestors may have opened to you and your demons. I renounce Satan and all his demons. I declare them to be my enemies. I want them out of my life completely. And I call on God in Jesus' name to set me free. In the name of Jesus Christ. I now close the door to all occult practices. Command all connected and related spirits to leave me now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I break any curses of rejection from the womb, any curses of illegitimacy which may be upon me or my family, even back to 10 generations on both sides of the family. In the name of Jesus Christ, I now renounce, break and loose myself from all demonic subjection, from any ungodly soul ties to my mother, father, grandparents, or any other person living or dead who have ever dominated or controlled me in any way which is contrary to the will of God or contrary to God's word. I thank you, Lord, for setting me free. I also repent. I ask you to forgive me if I have ever dominated or controlled some other person in the wrong way. In the name of Jesus Christ, I now renounce, break and loose myself and all my descendants from all psychic heredity, demonic holds, psychic powers, bondages, bonds of physical or mental illness, our curses, which may be upon my family line as a result of sins, transgressions, iniquities, occult or psychic involvements of myself, my parents, or any of my ancestors, of my spouse, any and all ex-spouses, are their parents, are any of their ancestors. In the name of Jesus Christ, I now renounce, break and loose myself and all my descendants from all evil curses, charms, vexes, spells, jinxes, psychic powers, bewitchments, witchcraft or sorcery, which may have been put upon me or my family from any psychic source or any witchcraft source. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I order any spirits to leave me now. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for setting me free. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command Satan and all his demons to loose my mind completely. I ask you, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, 
So send out your angels to break, cut, and sever all fetters, bands, chains, ties, and bonds of whatsoever sort the enemy has managed to place on my mind by word or deed, I ask you to loosen to me and into my family the spirits of the Lord, wisdom, counsel, might, knowledge, fear of the Lord, power, love, sound mind, grace, peace, and the spirit of the Lord. Father in heaven, I break, cut, and renounce all evil soul ties which I have had with lodges, evil religious systems, adulterers, drunkards, close friends, cults, and any other evil soul ties. I renounce them and declare them cut in Jesus' name. Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus Christ, send out angels to gather up the fragments of my soul and restore them to their rightful place in me. I ask that the angels unearth and break all earthen vessels, any bonds, bands, or bindings which have been put upon my soul by any means whatsoever. Restore all the pieces of my fragmented mind, will, emotions, appetite, intellect, heart or personality. Bring them all into proper and original positions where they belong. In the name of Jesus Christ, I break any and all curses which have been placed against me or my family by witchcraft. And according to Psalm 109, I order the curses and the spirits to return to the senders now. In accordance with the Leviticus 26, I do now confess the sins of my ancestors, all sins of idolatry and demon worship, witchcraft and occultism, lust, adultery, and divorce, perversion, child abuse, all sins of stubbornness and rebellion and evil heart of unbelief. And, of unbelief. and according to the provisions of 1 John 1, 9, and to the of 1 John 1.9, I accept forgiveness for the sins of my ancestors. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I lift from myself and my family, and my family. The, curses, the curses, whoredoms, whoredoms and iniquities and in Jesus' mighty name. name. I come to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus. as my deliverer. deliverer. You know all my problems, problems. all the things that drive, drive. torment, Torment. defile and harass me. me. I now loose myself myself. from every dark spirit, spirit. from every evil influence, from all satanic bondage, from every spirit in me which is not a spirit of God. I command all such spirits to leave me now in the name of Jesus Christ. I confess that my body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, redeemed, cleansed, sanctified, by the blood of Jesus Christ. 
Therefore Satan has no more place in me. No more power over me. Because of the blood of Jesus. All right. Now we have cleared an awful lot of underbrush. If you're going to cut trees down, you first have to get the underbrush out before you can get your big saws after the trees. And we've cleared an awful lot of underbrush tonight. And now we come to the fun part. That's where we throw out the net and see what's ready and ripe and ready to go. And what we're going to do next, I'm simply going to read from a list of spirits. You, all you'll have to do, by the way, is just sit back, relax, and be willing for the demons to leave. Is that simple enough? Amen. All right. That makes it kind of easy, doesn't it? I'll do the pulling from up here. And as we call off this list of spirits, all I want you to do, I want you to not pray with your mouth for a while. I want you to pray. I just don't want you to pray with your mouth for a time. I want you to move your praying up here in your mind, okay? And I want you to, uh, as, we, as I call the spirits out, don't shop, you know, don't cafeteria on me. Say, well, I might have that. Yeah, I probably have that one. Ooh, I don't have, ooh, I don't have that one. Ooh, no, I know I don't have that. But see, you really don't know what's down in the depths of yourself. You really don't know because you've inherited a lot of things that haven't manifested yet. And the thing is, if it's there, don't you want it out? So what you do, rather than try to pick out and pick and choose, when I call out a spirit's name, in your mind, say, Father, if it's there, get it. Okay? That makes two of us. See, I'm calling for it to come out. You're agreeing with me. And if two agree on earth is touching any one thing, what'll happen? It'll be done. Okay? And so if that rascal's ready to come loose, if we've gotten all the grounds away from him, he'll have to come out. Isn't that good news? Now, um, first of all, I'm going to take authority over Satan. We've got to put him on notice what we're doing. That's right, isn't it? I mean, he's the prince of the power of the air. You wouldn't want us to bypass him. Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ, we put you on notice and all your forces that we're attacking you from the power of the third heaven. High above Lucifer, high above principalities, powers, thrones, dominions, world rulers, kings, and princes. And we order all your forces over this church to be bound immediately. Father, in Jesus' name, send angels by the legions to uh, garrison this place. We want this church covered, every nook and cranny of it, every cubby hole to be filled with angelic power. Any demons that are floating around in the air, we want you to grab them, seize them, tie them up, and take them away to wherever Jesus wants them to go. And as they leave the people, take them to wherever Jesus wants them to go. Get them out of here. And also, Father, in Jesus' name, we ask you to send angels to guard every vehicle that the people have come to this place in, to guard their belongings at the motel or at their homes where they come from, and to guard their children, their families. We don't want the demons playing mischief with anything. We ask those angels to take up their stations. And of course, before I could get it out of my mouth, those angels are on guard. Now, see, we can just relax. This is, this is now the safest place in Chicago land. All right. <laughs> You see, it doesn't take a big rigmarole. You don't have to go through a long, flowery prayer. You just ask the Father in Jesus' name what you want. And you have authority to do that. And no use wasting a lot of time. Now then, as we go through this list, I want you to just, when we start it, I want you to breathe through your mouth and not your nose for a time. It's just because the word spirit, breath, and uh, demon are all the same word in the original languages. And most of these things are going to come out through the breathing passages, all right? So therefore, we want you to, uh, when, I, when I call these things out, just breathe out, let them go. Breathe through your nose and mouth. And I'm going to call a little groups, and I'm going to stop, and I'm going to say, now breathe them out, people. And when I do that, I want you to breathe out hard, kind of like this, about three or four times, okay? Now, don't get carried away and decide to go into a huffing-puffing match, uh, <laughs> like the Big Bad Wolf or something. I mean, you don't have to do that. Because if you do that, see, you'll hyperventilate and get dizzy and think you're getting delivered, and all you're doing is just hyperventilating. Because if they're ready to come out, you give them a push with them just breathing out, and you're agreeing with me in your mind and, uh, that you want them out. If they're ready to come out, they'll start moving, and you don't have to worry about it. Now then, some of you are going to start losing demons quicker than others. And um, if something starts coming up other than air, Wave your hand around. We've got people stationed around here at strategic locations with, um, with towels. And uh, you just raise your hand, and they'll get to you. Let's see. I think that's about all we need for preparation. It's not that complicated, is it? Rather simple. 
And now comes the fun part when we see the enemy start in retreat. It may take him a while to crank up, but we'll get him moving. He's kind of reluctant, the reluctant dragon, but we'll get him moving. We'll just keep poking him till he obeys, all right? I take authority over the strong man and every demon present here. The strong man and every person. Oh, you cowards, don't leave yet. I didn't tell you yet. Um, some of them just can't wait. Um, I take authority over the strong man and every person present. And I put you on notice that we're attacking you from the power of the third heaven. When I call your name or your family name, you must leave the people. They've come here to be free. They love Jesus. They belong to him. Your trespassers, your interlopers, your grounds and your legal holes have been destroyed. And you must leave the people. Now when I call your name, come out in Jesus' name. First the spirits of the occult, the Ouija board, sorcery, witchcraft control. Witchcraft of all kinds, water witching, magic, voodoo, divination, fortune telling, spirits from Gene Dixon, Edgar Casey, Irene Hughes and the Psychics, spirits of automatic writing, handwriting analysis, spirits from tea leaves, coffee grounds, pistol ball, tarot cards, palm reading, astrology, horoscope, signs of the zodiac. Breathe them out, people, let them go. Come on out of there. Just take three or four slow deep breaths. Breathe them out, let them go. Come on out of there. Come on, I said, come out in Jesus' name. Come on, all you divination spirits. Come on, fortune telling. Come out of there now. Come on out in Jesus' name. Come on out in Jesus' name. Move, move, move. You're not moving fast enough. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up and come on out. Loose the people and let them go. Come on, hurry up. Hypnosis, ESP, spiritualism, medium, seance, necromancy, levitation, table tipping, clairvoyance, transcendental meditation, astral projection, ekantar, soul travel, mind control, EST and PSI. Come out now, breathe them out, people. Let them go, come on, come on out of there. Hurry up, come out in Jesus' name. Leave, yes, you have to go. Come on out of there in Jesus' name. Hurry, come out, hurry. Spirits from Eastern religions, Hinduism, Taoism, Confucianism, I Ching, Krishna, Zen, Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> <laughs> Are you having a hard time, demon? But just come on out. You <laughs> oh, you have a dirty mouth, don't you? Christian science, Rosicrucians, theophysy, unity, metaphysics, Baha'i, Scientology, inner peace movement, spiritual frontiers, Urandia, Moonies. The children of God, the farm, Islam, black Muslims, the way, the walk, and all the cultic groups. Come out. Come out now. Come out. Biorhythm, yoga, karate, and all the martial arts. Taekwondo. Come on. Let's go. Move. Breathe them out, people. Let them go. Come on. Slow deep breaths. Let them go. In Jesus' name. Come out. Come on out. In Jesus' name. Come on out of there. Hurry up. Hurry up and move. Come on. name. Spirits that came from charms, come out in Jesus' name. Fetishes, potions, spells, occult games like Dungeons and Dragons, come out. Psychic readings, reincarnation, spirits from pyramid, clairaudience, mental science, false visions, superstitions, amulets, talisman, Satanism, karma, hex signs, come on out. Come on, all the occult spirits, let's go out in the name of Jesus. Out in the name of Jesus. The Lord Jesus Christ rebuke you. The Lord Jesus Christ rebuke you. Come out of there. The Lord Jesus Christ rebuke you. Come out. Come out in Jesus' name. Leave the people. Loose them and let them go. Loose them and let them go. Loose them and let them go. Spirits of laziness, self-deception, impatience, pride. Come out now in Jesus' name. Come on. Leviathan. I break the curse of Leviathan. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out in the name of Jesus. Come out in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Pulled your string, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> well, you can't please all the people, you know. All right. Leviathan, come on. Leviathan, come out. King over the children of pride. Come out. Come out in Jesus' name. Come on, move. Move in Jesus' name. Ugliness, self-hate, irritation, ambition, loneliness, despair, hopelessness, suicide, death. 
loneliness, despair, hopelessness, suicide and death. Come on. Loneliness, despair, hopelessness, suicide and death. Come out now. Come out now in Jesus' name. Come out now in the name of Jesus. Come on. Move. I said move in Jesus' name. Come out in the name of Jesus. Come out. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Go. Come out now in Jesus' name. Loneliness, despair, hopelessness, suicide and death. Come out. Confusion, rejection, depression, misery, torment, doubt, unbelief, greediness, covetousness, spirits of guilt, shame and condemnation. Come out. Guilt, shame, and condemnation. Come out. Come on. Guilt, shame, and condemnation. That's an order. Come out. Move in Jesus' name. Come out in the name of Jesus. Come out now. Move in Jesus' name. Come out. Come on out in Jesus' name. Come on out in Jesus' name. Come out in the name of Jesus. Come out. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out now in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out. Hurry up. Evil heart of unbelief. Come out. Evil heart of unbelief, leave in Jesus' name. Hurry, come out now. All spirits of fear, fear has torment. God has not given us a spirit of fear. God has not given us a spirit of fear. All the fear spirits, line up. You have to come out now in Jesus' name. Fear, fear of giving and receiving love freely. Fear of death, fear of pain, fear of falling, fear of darkness, fear of dogs, fear of cats, Fear of insects, fear of snakes, fear of earthquakes, fear of storms, fear of crowds, fear of falling. Come out now. Fear of darkness and fear of death. Come out. Fear of death. Come out of there in Jesus' name. Come on. Out in the name of Jesus. Come on. Fear of death. Come out. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come out. In the name of Jesus Christ. Leave. Loose the people and let them go. Loose them and let them go. Fear of crowds, fear of water, fear of drowning, fear of close places, fear of the future, nightmares, demons, fear of demons, fear of Satan, fear of the loss of salvation, fear of judgment, fear of purgatory, fear of hell, spirits of wrath, ang anger, temper, contention, and fighting. Breathe them out, people, let them go. Come on, wrath, anger, seething anger, rage, vengeance, Spirits of the military, Jim Jones, murder, destruction, vandalism, malice, envy, resentment, bitterness, jealousy, hysteria, fits and convulsions. Come out now in Jesus' name. Breathe them out, people. Let them go. Come on out of there. Child abuse, spirits of child abuse, divorce, separation, spirits of a broken heart, wounded spirit, deep hurt, unforgiveness, revenge, vengeance, seething anger, rage, schizophrenia and paranoia. Schizophrenia and paranoia, come on out in Jesus' name. It's time to go, come on. It's time to come out, leave. Loose the people and let them go. In the name of Jesus Christ, come out of there. Come on out in Jesus' name. Spirits of profanity, blasphemy, filthy conversation, spirits of lying, gossip, slander, whining, complaining, self-pity, criticism, mockery, foolishness, ridicule and perversity. Come out now in Jesus' name. Come out in the name of Jesus. Profanity, blasphemy, filthy conversation. Come out of that voice box right now. But if you can't stand it, come out in Jesus' name. Come on out. Come on out of there. Loose that woman, let her go. Loose her. Loose her. Go. 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 Get out in Jesus' name. I break every curse of the automatic failure mechanism in working in families. Even back to 10 generations on both sides of family, I break the curse of the automatic failure mechanism. Now the spirits of poverty, discouragement, failure, worthlessness, and rejection that came in under this curse come out now in Jesus' name. Come on. Come on. Move. Poverty. 
poverty, discouragement, failure, worthlessness and rejection that came under the automatic failure mechanism. Come out now in Jesus' name. Move. Come out in the name of Jesus. All spirits of addiction rooted in rejection. We're coming after you. Gluttony, overeating, bulimia, anorexia nuversa, binging, addiction and craving for food and sweets. All right, anorexia, come on. Anorexia nervosa, come out of there. Anorexia, come out. Anorexia, come on. Let's go in the name of Jesus. Loose them and let them go. Anorexia and bulimia, come out now in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name. Leave. Loose the people and let them go. Loose them and let them go. Come on out of there. Addiction and craving for and bondage to tobacco of all kinds. Nicotine. Spirits of nicotine and the allergies of nicotine. Come out now. Breathe them out, people. Let them go. Come out of the lungs, out of the sinuses, out of the breathing passages, out of the bronchial tube. Leave now. Come on. Come on. Addiction and craving for tobacco. Come on out of there, Jesus. Said. Hurry up and leave in Jesus' name. Addiction and craving for alcohol of all kinds. Wine is a mocker. Strong drink is raging. Whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Spirits of wine drinking, mockery, deception and stupidity. Come out now in Jesus' name. Come out now in Jesus' name. Addiction and craving for it. Bondage to drugs of all kinds. Sorcery, marijuana, LSD, speed. THC, TPC, mescaline, angel dust, cocaine, crack, heroin, valium, amphetamines, diet pills, barbiturates, tranquilizers, phenobarbital. Come out now in Jesus' name. Loose the people and let them go. I said loose the people and let them go. Spirits of lust. I break the curses of lust on the people. Back to ten generations on both sides of the family. I want all the sex spirits that came in through the eyes, through the ears, through participation, through transfer or inheritance. You come out now. Masturbation, guilt, shame, condemnation, pornography, homosexuality, lesbianism, sex perversion of all kinds, including oral sex, anal sex, bestiality, sadism and masochism, spirits of incest, rape, fornication, adultery, immorality, prostitution, harlotry, occult sex, uncleanness, filth, filthy dreams, filthy conversations, filthy imaginations, sexual flashbacks, sexual fantasies, frigidity, impotence, cruelty, incubi, succubi, lasciviousness, lewdness, nudity, promiscuity, flirting, seduction, lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh. Come out of the sex organs, come out of the lips, the tongue, the taste buds, the throat, and the mind in Jesus' name. Move, breathe them out, people, let them go. Come on out of there. Hurry up, move in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name. Come on out of there. I break all the curses of deformity, infirmity, and sickness on the people. Back to ten generations on both sides of the family. Come out of there now. Spirits of sickness and deformity. Come out now in Jesus' name. Sickness and infirmity. Infirmity spirits, come out. Come out of the bowels. Come out of the intestines. Come out of every organ in the body. Sickness and infirmity, come out now in Jesus' name. Come on out in Jesus' name. Move, come on out of there. Come out in Jesus' name. All spirits of pain, arthritis, swelling, infection, cancer, ulcer, tumor, cyst, and weakness, come out now. Fatigue unto death, fatigue unto death. Come out now in Jesus' name, come on. Ulcer, cancer, tumor, and cyst, come out. Come on out of there in Jesus' name. Lee, come out in Jesus' name. I break the curse of allergies on the people. Back to ten generations on both sides of the family. Spirits of hay fever, asthma, bronchitis. All spirits of hay fever, asthma, bronchitis, and other sinus and respiratory system allergies. Come out now. Hay fever, asthma, bronchitis. Come out now. Sinus, sinuses, come out of the sinuses. All spirits causing swelling, itching, burning, infection, 
excess drainage and irritation come out of the lungs, out of the bronchial tubes, out of the mouth, and out of the sinuses. All allergies to food and chemical substances come out of the bloodstream or whatever part of the body you're hiding in. Come out now. Allergies. Allergies. Come out now in Jesus' name. Allergies. Come out in the name of Jesus. Spirits of Candida. Come out in Jesus' name. Candida. Come out in Jesus' name. Spirits of hemorrhoids, muscle spasms, cramps, drowning, asphyxiation, choking, smothering, fainting, swelling, fits, convulsions, and epilepsy. Come out now in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out now. Spirits of heart failure, heart attack, heart disease, and all the fear of all of these. Come out of the muscles of the heart, out of the bowels of the heart, out of the nerves, out of the blood vessels. Spirits of hypoglycemia, hyperglycemia, high and low blood pressure, come out now. Breathe them out, people. Let them go. Come on out of there. Hurry up. Leave. Spirits causing diabetes, gallbladder problems, kidney infection, MS, muscular dystrophy, crippling spirits, Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, spirits of psoriasis, eczema, acne, warts, mold, spirit of the bone breaker, the back breaker, traumatic shock and paralysis. Spirits of cataract, glaucoma, astigmatism, blindness, and all kinds of eye trouble come out now in Jesus' name. Spirits of deafness, hard of hearing, vertigo, and troubles related to the ears and to hearing come out of the people now in Jesus' name. All religious spirits, religious spirits of legalism, externalism, hypocrisy, religious bondage, religious slavery, religious murder, lust and ambition for recognition, lust and ambition for position, lust and ambition for power and control in religious matters. Come out of the people now. Spirits of false love, false gifts, false tongues, false discernment, false word of wisdom, false prophecy, religious dominance, come out now in Jesus' name. Self-serving spirits, selfishness, greed, no love, religious coldness, no compassion, spirits of robbery, cheating, pretense, false oaths, blockages, rigid theology, obstructionism, hatred of the truth, spirits of Nimrod, Semiamorous and Hemos, come out now in Jesus' name. I come against the Babylonian spirits of the Roman Catholic Church, spirits of idolatry, Catholic baptism, prayer to the saints, dedication to the priesthood, dedication to be a nun, come out of there now in Jesus' name. Spirits of one true church, one holy priesthood, Spirits from the Mass, from Holy Eucharist, adoration of the host and incense, come out now in Jesus' name. Breathe them out, people. Let them go. The sorrowful mysteries of the Rosary. The joyful mysteries of the Rosary. The glorious mysteries of the Rosary. Holy Mother Church, authority of the Pope, infallibility of the Pope, fear of the priest, fear of the nuns, confessional, holy water, spirits of sacred heart of Jesus, sacred heart of Mary, Holy Family, spirits from Stations of the Cross, spirits from the Rosary, the Crucifix, Candle, Blessing of the Throat, St. Blaise, spirits of fear of hell, fear of purgatory, guilt, condemnation, unworthiness and good works, mind control and holy orders, come out now in Jesus' name. Spirits of extreme unction, confirmation, spirits from the sacraments, benediction, human bone relics in the altars, genuflecting, feast days of the saints, votive candles, witchcraft control, forced celibacy, poverty, spirits from religious metals, sacrifice of the mass, angel of good counsel, sign of the cross, spiritual adultery, indulgences, infant of fraud, and religious hatred come out now. The worship and veneration of Mary, 
Mary Olletry, Immaculate Conception of Mary, Sacred Heart of Mary, Mary Queen of Heaven, May Altars in Honor of Mary, Our Lady of Lourdes, Our Lady of Mercedes, Our Lady of Fatima, Our Lady of the Snows, Our Lady of Guadalupe, Queen of Martyrs, Queen of Peace, Mary Star of the Sea, the Blue Army, Spirits of the Blue Army, come out now in Jesus' name. Novenas, scapulars, spiritual blindness, spiritual deafness, feast of peace, the feast of life, Lent, destruction of the family priesthood, the passion spirits of agony and ecstasy, ashes on ash Wednesday, Saint Teresa, Saint the Little Flower, Saint Christopher, Saint Jude, Saint Anthony, Saint Catherine, Saint Anne, Saint Elizabeth, and all the saints, come out now in Jesus' name. Loose the people and let them go. Loose them and let them go in Jesus' name. You loose them and let them go right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Loose the people and let them go. Now, if you need help where you are, we'll get somebody to you to help you.